Lifting Up Jesus, Opening His Word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. Satan not having omnipresence is something he seeks to ameliorate or compensate for by the use of demons. And the same as we have archangels, we have archdemons. Some demons are more powerful than others. Jesus made this very clear. This kind only go out by prayer and fasting. Some demons are more powerful than each other, just as Gabriel and Michael are more powerful than other angelic beings. Demons are only fallen angels. Well, let's understand this. Satan comes as the accuser in the book of Job. God says, where have you been? I've been going to and fro on the earth. He cannot be omnipresent. He cannot be. <clears throat> Ultimately, he will not have access to heaven at all. He'll be cast down, and he will inhabit the body of the Antichrist. Does Satan have a throne? Jesus spoke in the present active when he told the church in Pergamum where Satan's throne is. At that time, Pergamum, was an important place in Satan's agenda. Pay attention, I'll give the historical background. All false religion originated in Babylon with Nimrod and Semiramis. The Babylonian Empire was the Old Testament penultimate expression of the false religious system of the world, controlled by Satan, obviously. Babylon became the general metaphor for false religion, ultimately foreshadowing Babylon the Great in the book of Revelation. When, as predicted by Isaiah, that the Babylonian Empire would fall to the Persians, Isaiah 44 and 45, the pagan priesthood of Babylon, there were 300 official priests of Babylon, 300 exactly, packed up their wares and literally migrated westward and set up shop in Pergamum. Hence, the false religions of Babylon that had roots going back to the Tower of Babel, but the false religions of the Babylonian Empire, foreshadowing Babylon the Great, migrated from Babylon in Iraq, in the Fertile Crescent between the Tigris and Euphrates, westward and set up shop near the coast of the Mediterranean in Pergamum in what is today Turkey, the day of Jesus, the Roman province of Asia. There, there was a confluence of religious influences meeting in Pergamum. We explain this on our teaching of Acts 15. It was sometimes called Perga, Perga. Today it's called Burgma in Turkish. I've been there many times. There was an Acropolis over the lower city. The Mithras worship of Egypt came north to Pergamum. The emperor worship from Europe, from Rome, came south via Greece into Pergamum. So too, the Zeus worship came south. So Rome was to the west, Babylon to the east, Egypt to the south, and Greece to the north. From Greece came the worship of Zeus, a corruption of Theos, the Greek word for God, where in Greek mythology, Mount Olympus became the counterfeit, the diabolical counterfeit of Mount Zion, God's holy mountain, instead it became Mount Olympus. And instead of the Savior who was fully human and fully divine, Jesus, the Greeks had Hercules, who had a 
supposedly divine father in Zeus, but a human mother. Hercules was the savior who was 50-50. Jesus was the savior who was 100 and 100. 100% 100%, God, 100% man. Hercules was a hybrid, always a counterfeit. So from the south in Egypt came the Mithras worship. From the north in Greece came the worship of Zeus. From the west came the emperor worship from Rome. And then the ancient religions of Babylon came from the east, all converging in Pergamum, where there were notorious persecutions of believers. What else happens? They build on the Acropolis overlooking the city, the temple of Zeus, with marble capstones on top of the altar. Down underneath it in the city, overshadowed by the Acropolis where the altar of Zeus was, came by the end of the second century, by the end of the first century, beginning of the second century, the clinic or hospital of Galen of Pergamum. Do not let anyone tell you that the pseudoscience and the humanist religion, the false religion of humanism, we call psychology, began with Freud and Jung and Maslow. It did not. It has very ancient origins. In the clinic, which was a sort of religious temple, come hospital combined, underneath the altar of Zeus in Pergamum, you had this hospital clinic hybrid temple of Galen, where the four primary body fluids were said to correspond to four personality types. This whole thing today with the shape thing, the personality profile that some churches have gotten into, the choleric, the melancholic, the sanguine, this existed in ancient civilization in Pergamum. It came from Galen of Pergamum, a pseudoscience having no real physiological basis, the same as secular psychology is non-quantitative. We can speak of neuropsychology, biopsychology, and psychiatric medicine as being quantitative because those things relate neurophysiological metabolism to behavior. But pure psychology has no quantitative basis. It's not real science. It's simply a false religion of humanism where the soul becomes confused with the spirit, particularly in Jungian psychology, <clears throat> the collective unconscious, and in Eastern religion. The convicted swindler, Yi Chao from Korea, actually taught a mixture of mystical Buddhism and Christianity, saying that your imagination is your spirit, a function of the soul confused with the spirit, claiming in his book, The Fourth Dimension, that Hindus and Buddhists have known this for centuries. Now Jesus has shown it to him. Well, that swindler was convicted with his son and sentenced to three and a half years in prison. He was the, the swindler and a heretic. That was Young Yi Chao. People in the West were impressed by it. He combined the Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagen word faith formula with, with mystical Buddhism. Before he got caught, he was criminally convicted as a swindler. Well, these things had origins in Pergamum. Let no one deceive you. We did a teaching called Makshafut, the Hebrew understanding of witchcraft and the occult. Show that the Greek term mesmero, mesmerize, to put the evil eye on someone. How psychological manipulation is a form of witchcraft, hypnotic induction. A lot of the manifestations you see today happening with people like Bill Johnson or, or the things that happened at Pensacola and in, in Toronto. I couldn't control it. These kinds of things. Fruit of the Spirit is self-control. Therefore, it's not the Holy Spirit. Well, it's a combination of hypnotic induction and demonic deception. The epicenter of this religious psychology during the age of the ancient church, the early church was Pergamum, taking place in the shadow 
of Zeus worship. Jesus was probably, or at least not unlikely, referring to the altar of Zeus as the throne of Satan. He was the chief deity of the Greco-Roman world that was at that time persecuting the church under the emperor <coughs> Domitian at the end of the first century. It's interesting and perhaps not coincidental that those capstones of that altar were removed to Berlin when Turkey was aligned with Germany in the First World War, the Ottoman Empire. What happens? Now, the altar is still there. The foundation stones are there. The altar is there. But the capstones were taken to Berlin. Lo and behold, the Third Reich, Adolf Hitler. That's his capital of the Reich. Then it becomes the gateway, the Brandenburg Gate, the gate of the Iron Curtain into the atheistic, anti-Jesus, anti-Semitic Soviet empire. The gate of the Iron Curtain, Brandenburg Gate, Berlin. Where? Same place where the stones are. The capstones of the altar of Zeus. Germany is the predominant economic and political power in the European Union. The Bundesbank is simply the European Central Bank. The European Central Bank is simply the Bundesbank with a new name. The Euro is simply the Deutschmark with a new name. Just as in the Holy Roman Empire, which was neither holy nor Roman, the religious power in Europe was concentrated in Rome and the political economic power was concentrated in Germany. We see that happening again in accordance with the prophecies of Daniel, trying to make the iron stick to the clay. What we know about Rome, Rome was a place identified as Babylon by the early Christians. Now remember, Peter writing from, his, from Rome says, she was in Babylon greets you. Babylon moved to Pergamum. Pergamum became the gateway of the mystery religions of Babylon into the Greco-Roman world. <clears throat> From there to the Pantheon of Rome. From the Pantheon of Rome, after the time of Constantine, these things were absorbed into Roman Catholicism. And when Constantine moved his capital to Constantinople, into the Byzantine church, that is Eastern Orthodoxy. But it all came from Babylon via Pergamum. All of it. Yes there ultimately will be a Babylon the Great. There will be a confederation of the world's false religious system with the world's corrupt economic system and the world's corrupt political system. That is to say, the corrupt political economic system in league with a multi-faith religious pseudo-monolith under the control of the Antichrist and false prophet. And it will be at some literal location. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Again, Jesus was speaking in the present continuous active tense when he said Pergamum is where Satan's throne is. So many of the demonic influences we see today in false religion in the West. I'm not just talking about the Roman Church or the Eastern Orthodox Church. I'm talking about the psychologized church, the teachings of the late Norman Vincent Peale and Robert Schuller, the positive thinking church, the mysticism and Gnosticism of the Bill Johnson Church and the Mike Bickle IHOP Church. The doorway of these incipient influences came from Babylon via Pergamum into the Western world. Those influences are still found in everything, from Freemasonry to Roman Catholicism to Christian psychology to the mysticism and Gnosticism of the emergent church. But they all came originally from Babylon 
and invaded the Western world via Pergamum, where Satan's throne is. Look what happened in Berlin when those stones were taken from that altar. Is that a coincidence? I can't be dogmatic about it, but I tend to doubt it. There's a significance of some kind. That's where the Third Reich was. That's where the gate into the Iron Curtain was. This is not superstition. This is history. These things happened. Now, I'm very cautious about it. I don't want to be overly dogmatic. But looking at the text in context, yes, Satan has a throne. And ultimately, the Antichrist will seek to establish that throne in the beautiful land, it says in Daniel. And ultimately, he will try to put his throne and succeed in doing so with the Shikut Sameshu Mem, the abomination of desolation, coming in the character of Antiochus Epiphanes, as predicted by Daniel, and as historically fulfilled in the book of Maccabees, celebrated by Jesus in John chapter 10, the Antichrist will establish his throne in a tribulational temple in Jerusalem, to the best of my understanding. Complicated subject. One book I might want to refer you to is Shadows of the Beast, how the coming Antichrist will be identified to the faithful church. But it is, again, indeed, an in-depth and complex subject. I've tried to give you a nutshell explanation and response.